In this tutorial, we're going to look at the inversion of field resistivity data. We're going to use the example in figure 5.1 and show how we can use reciprocity measurements to assess errors and use those to constrain our inversions. So we first of all select 2D and inverse and import data. And then I read in this data set. And in this case, I have a reciprocal data set, and I can upload that by selecting this box here. So now I read in the reciprocal set. I can specify my electrode positions. I've got these in a CSV file, so I can read those in here. And then I can go to pre-processing. And now I can look at my errors, my reciprocal errors. So I can plot the histogram of my errors. This is useful sometimes just to check that I actually don't have any bias in my uh, errors. Um, my pseudo section here is plotting the transfer resistances, but I can plot the apparent resistivity but I can also now plot the reciprocal error. And this is highlighting here, for example, that I've got an area to the right where I've got relatively high reciprocal errors. I could filter those if I like. So I might decide to apply a, a, a threshold of 5%. And I apply my filter. And in which case now I've, actually, I've removed these, these measurements. I'm going to reset this and work with the full data set. And I'm going to look at the resistance error model. So if I select this, and now these are my observed errors, plotting the transfer resistance error versus the transfer resistance. These are the absolute values of each of these. I can fit a model through here that that then shows how my transfer resistance error changes with resistance. I'm going to use this relationship then to dictate the error model that's used in the inversion. I'm going to go to mesh, triangulate my mesh. This is my hill slope with electrodes equal spacing along the hill slope surface. Go to inversion setting. You'll see in this case, A weight and B weight now are set to zero. That means that R2 is going to use an individual error against each measurement. And that individual error comes from the error model that we've just produced. I go to inversion, select invert. My initial misfit is high, but soon reduces. And this is now on iteration two, but looks like it's going to converge either at the end of this iteration or the next iteration. Iteration three has converged. And then we have our final result. So I'm going to remove the sensitivity overlay change my color scale and in this case we see a conductive lobe coming through here and in actual fact it's a it's a near horizontal conductive layer that is smeared over to the right because we have very little sensitivity and in fact I can show that by plotting the sensitivity map you see the area of actually high sensitivity or low sensitivity in this blue zone leads to a a smearing um, down on the on the bottom right hand side. I can also look at the fit of the data. If I go to post processing, I can see now a pseudo section of my misfit. So this is indicating areas that have high positive or negative error. So these 
measurements here are not fitting well for example as these errors over uh, these measurements over here and if I plot these not as a pseudo section but just as a as a regular plot XY plot and I'll see for all my measurements 700 odd measurements these are my normalized errors in transfer resistances and and these are the error between the transfer resistance that the final model produces compared to the measured data divided by the error in that measurement and this should be a this should have a, a mean of zero and 99% should lie between plus or minus three of that normalized error and you can see that that the match is not bad here um, illustrating that there is there is uh, very little bias in the measurements and the the distribution is is uh, as we would expect